Okay, so we're going to get to paint today and we're going to learn about color mixing today. But before we can start painting, I need to explain to you about color mixing. I need to give you some painting tips so you know what you're doing. And I need you to watch and see how it's done. And then after you've t recorded some notes, taken some tips and seen how it's done, then I'll leave the video continue to play on mute. And I will walk around and help you and we will all get to experience color mixing and try it out. So first thing, I just want you to watch and take notes. So first let me talk about color. There are primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. Those are your primary colors. So I'm going to write red, yellow, and blue. They are called primary colors because you cannot mix anything to create these colors. They just are. They are color in the purest form. These are the colors you need to make all the other colors. So it's just like how a primary number is only divided between one and itself. A primary color, you cannot mix anything to get to red, yellow, or blue. Those are primary. Now the secondary colors are going to be what they mix to create. For example, red mixed with yellow will create orange. Yellow mixed with blue will create green. Blue mixed with red will create violet. So secondary colors, I like to think of them as the second color. When you take these two colors and you mix them, you get a second color. So those are orange, green, and violet. Now a tint is any time you take a color, it could be a primary color, a secondary color, a tertiary color, and you add white to it, you create a lighter value. So a tint is any color plus white. And I'll show you how to make all of those. Now as you're watching this video, you're going to receive some supplies. You're going to receive some cups of color, like this. And notice, what, are there, what kind of colors are they? They're primary, because you, this is all you need to mix colors. Primary and then white to create tints or different values. You're going to get some paper towels, you're going to get some water, and you're going to get a paintbrush. You're also going to get some thick yellow paper, and this paper is going to be what's called your palette. A palette has two meanings in art. A palette can be a tray or something you keep your paint colors on. A palette can also be the colors you choose to use. So when people talk about an artist's palette, they're talking about the colors that they chose. Or if you're holding a palette, it's something that holds your color. So for painting tips, the first thing you're going to need to know how to do is scoop the color you need. Because we can't just take this brush and stick it into the blue and paint with it and then stick it into the yellow and paint with it and stick it into the red and paint with it because you're going to end up contaminating these and then we aren't going to have our pure primary colors anymore. We want to keep these colors safe. So we do all of our mixing on the palette, not in the cup. So what you want to do when you get your palette, when you're done watching this video for the first time, you're going to scoop some paint Put yourself some yellow down, put some blue down. Now notice I'm putting these far away from each other because I want some space to allow me to mix colors. So here are my primaries, put these down and leaving some room. So when you got a clean brush, a nice dry clean brush, we can start with yellow and we can just go ahead and paint. So I'm going to fill in this yellow box. Now, having a dry brush when you're working with tempera paint is very important. I know that when we used watercolor with our folder project, it was sort of like the more water the better, and there were all these different effects you could do with water. But with paint, tempera paint, you want to be able to cover things up completely. If you make a mistake with tempera paint, you can let it dry, paint on top of it, the mistake goes away, as long as you're using paint that isn't watered down. So you want your brush dry at all times. Now if we mix yellow and blue, you get green. So in order to do that, I'm not just going to start stabbing the colors with the brush. Actually what I'm going to do is take the brush, remember we wrote scoop the color you need. Start with the lighter color, scoop it. I'm going to put a scoop of yellow over here off to the side. Then I'm going to take the darker color and I'm going to use a very very tiny amount. See how tiny that is? 
put it in, stir it. Look how quickly that changed. So I used a lot of yellow and I used a very small amount of blue. So the next thing I want you to write down is use a very tiny amount of the darker color. Because I can show you what happens if you use too much of a darker color. So first let me paint this green in. And notice the further I pull the paint, if I really scrub with it, it gets thinner. You want to paint nice and thick. We don't have to scrub this. You know, if you need to mix more green, mix more green. If you need more paint, scoop more paint out. But the goal is that you wouldn't be able to see that white paper show through, that it should be all one even tone. Now look what happens if I take the yellow. I go to mix green again. So, you know, I scoop some yellow, put it off to the side. And then let's say I use a huge amount of blue. Look at how quickly that devours the yellow and you have basically blue again. It's a very, very blue green because I use too much of the dark color. You don't want to use too much of the dark color. So every time you change colors, rinse the brush out. You're not stabbing it. You're just swishing it through the water, stirring it. Take your paper towel, dry it off before you go to try a different color. So the other thing I want you to write down is rinse and dry between colors. Because if you have water on this brush, you're going to turn your paint in the water color. If you have red on this brush, and you go to dip into another color, you're going to contaminate it. So you want to make sure that you're always rinsing it off. So now blue, just going to paint with pure blue. And the blue isn't muddy or screwed up because I have a dry brush that's clean, doesn't have any other colors on it. Now let's say I want to create a tint. Making a tint works the same way as mixing a secondary. So I'm going to scoop the lighter color. So let me put some white on my palette now. Scoop the white off to an area where I can mix. Take a very tiny, tiny, tiny amount of blue. Stir it in. And I've got a very light blue and I'll put that all the way down here. Remember I said you can always go darker with paint, but you cannot go lighter. So I'm going to add another very tiny amount of blue, stir it in again. I've got a slightly darker shade. Here's a darker tint. Tiny amount of blue again, stir it. And I'm basically making a blue, a blue value scale. So I could even go darker if I want. You can always go darker, you can't go lighter. So that's all there is to color mixing. So I want you to, now that you have your supplies, now that you've seen this, try it out. I will walk around and help you. Make sure that you always scoop the color you need using the popsicle stick or using the brush. Use a very tiny amount of the darker color and always rinse and dry between colors. Now when it's time to clean up, clean up is going to be very easy. You can leave these cups in the middle of your table because they shouldn't be contaminated. They can still be reused. You're going to take this paint palette, fold it once, fold it twice, fold it three times, throw it in the trash. One person from each table can just set this in the sink because we're going to use them again in another class period. Thank you so much.